put my personal outlook on certain things in life into and I think it means a lot more when you're seeing about something other people can relate to because right now I don't see any demons flying around and I don't see Satan. Chuck Schuldiner from Death has an interesting way of writing and constructing songs. In the next few minutes I hope to enlighten you as to the pattern and template to which most of Death's catalog is written as well as the Control Denied songs. He stays away from the typical tropes of both popular music and death metal, never falling victim to the typical verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus of pop nor the absolute unstructured approach of many of the other early 90s death metal bands. Of course there's nothing wrong with writing music like that, I just found the way that Chuck Schuldiner structured his songs to be very interesting and unique. Although I am sure he is not the first one to write songs like this. Death is the band I recognize this pattern the most in. In 1995, Chuck said this about his songwriting in a magazine interview. Quote, If I write something I feel is powerful, and that I could put a good vocal pattern over, then I'll probably choose that as the main verse riff. The verse riff is crucial because it usually lasts longer than the chorus, and in our songs, the verses usually appear twice. I write traditional style, verse, chorus, verse, with a lead in the middle. So I make sure that whatever riff is going to be the verse riff is catchy as hell because that's what the listener will hear most. And it has to be pleasing to my ear. I have to put myself in the position of the listener to see if something is strong enough to be a main riff. Chuck's meaning of verses and choruses are much different than what is usually meant by that, and I will explain this using the song Symbolic, as it is well symbolic of the rest of the discography. Sorry about that, I had to make that joke. The structure applies through songs all through Death's catalog, including but not limited to Scream Bloody Gore's Zombie Ritual and Denial of Death, Leprosy's Pull the Plug and Left to Die, Spiritual Healing's title track and Low Life, Humans' Suicide Machine and Lack of Comprehension, to Individual Thought Patterns, Trapped in a Corner and The Philosopher, and then to basically every song on Symbolic, as well as The Sound of Perseverance, as well as all the songs on The Fragile Art of Existence, The Control Denied Record. Of course, not every song follows the template I will outline here perfectly, but as a general rule of thumb, it fits, and maybe you can use it to enhance your own songwriting here in the future. In general, Chuck writes songs like this. Intro, section 1, section 2, section 3, bridge, or perhaps you could call this maybe the chorus, section 1, section 2, section 3, outro. You can add and remove sections as needed, but in general, this is what most of the songs look like. Going back to the Chuck quote, I suppose you could simplify that down to verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, but I feel like that is selling it very short and way oversimplifying it. Each repeat of a section usually contains changed lyrics, but otherwise it is much the same. Same drum fills, same guitar riffs, same guitar fills, etc, etc. Sometimes the bridge section, which never repeats may contain a solo or a catchy hook of some kind. See zero tolerance for that. You will almost never hear a part played three times in a death song. So if we take a look at Symbolic here, we have basically eight distinct parts. An intro, four distinct sections that repeat once, a bridge, and an outro. Intro. Section 1. Section 1 repeat. Section 2. Section 2 repeat. Section 3. Section 3 repeat. Section 4, Section 4 repeat, Section 5, or perhaps in this song you could call Chorus, Section 5 repeat, Bridge, Bridge slash Solo, Outro.
Essentially, what is going on here is that we have a full prog metal song repeating twice inside of a larger song unit. When the song returns back to section 1, the song is already nearly 4 minutes long, basically already a full song. Now instead of simply ending the song, as many other bands would choose to do, or maybe adding one or two more distinct sections, Chuck then repeats the entire song up to the bridge and then ends it with an outro is usually how the songs go. As you can see, this is a very distinctly different way of writing songs, and maybe you never even noticed it. It is in that here that lies the genius and difficulty of writing songs this way, as it takes several minutes for each distinct section to repeat these sections have to stand out on their own. Keep your attention and keep the song moving forward and progressing in a logical manner. You cannot rely on the promise of another chorus coming in 30 seconds to ease a listener through a boring verse section, nor can you just rely on the free structure of a prog song to keep things entertaining by novelty. So to write this way, you have to write catchy and memorable parts and sections which can stand on their own, but can also be listened to once again later in the song and still be enjoyable. Very difficult compared to having just one chorus which gets repeated three or four times, a verse that gets repeated, you know, two, three times, etc, etc. I would argue that this approach is also tougher than unstructured songs to write, as these songs seem to straddle the middle ground between unstructured and pop structure songs. You know, you essentially are writing a song that can stand on its own, but then repeating it and making sure that the repeats don't get boring or contrived. Very, very difficult and a very genius way to write music. In that same interview, Chuck states, quote, But you have to be careful not to become too complex. Music has to have a foundation, something that will stick in your ear. Hopefully someone can listen to Symbolic and walk away whistling a tune, no matter how weird that may sound. You have to know where that limit is. Like Dream Theater, their music is very complex, but they definitely have hooks, which is crucial to making music listenable, and it's something that will always be part of this band. And you can really hear that on the song Symbolic. You know, there are a lot of fun parts that you can whistle along to, catchy melodies, catchy drum parts. You know, all this is repeated on so many death songs. Like, just think back and you can whistle melodies, pick them out, and perhaps these are ones that were repeated once, as in a verse, or maybe they were just the bridge where it only gets played once. It's interesting. So in essence, by writing this way, Chuck essentially gets you to listen to his song twice. During the first listen, ensuring you return to something familiar after the bridge section, which often contains the most progressive elements of the song, it leads you back home, in a sense. In the case of Symbolic, when you finally return to the main riff, which I would say is section 1, it almost feels comforting after the wild and crazy and esoteric bridge. It fits in nicely with the lyrics of the first repeat of the section as well, as these lyrics are sort of soaked in reliving nostalgia, etc, etc. Quote, Do you remember when things seemed so eternal? Heroes were so real? their magic frozen in time, the only way to learn is to be aware and hold on tight." End quote. Take almost any death or control denied song, add or remove sections as needed, and voila, you have the secret sauce, the crabby patty formula for greatness. You can check out my video on Flesh and the Power It Holds if you want to dive a little deeper on an individual song. This structure leaves you wanting, this structure leaves you wanting and ready to re-listen as each song seems like a journey to get through and if you want to hear your favorite part again, it may not have been repeated, so you will need to re-listen to that song to hear it once more as it is enticing you to re-listen to these songs. Pure genius. So if anyone knows of any other bands who write songs in similar styles, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd be interesting to hear a different band and a different mind write songs in this style. Yo, what's up guys? Uh, in between writing the script and editing it, I've taken my uh, dog here for a walk and I realized that uh, a lot of the songs on Iron Maiden's albums, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son and Somewhere in Time feature the same song structure, which makes a lot of sense considering this next quote here. Interviewer. Do you listen to any current death metal for inspiration? Chuck Schuldiner. Not really. I listen to more old Kiss and Iron Maiden albums for inspiration. Death metal today is just too limited and safe, but I try to keep up with current music. I like New Dream Theater and Merciful Fate records. It's important to remain a fan. Still go and buy records and pay for concert tickets. I don't expect to get these things for free. Especially the songs uh, Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner is the one I really recognize it. Essentially it's the same structure as a lot of the death songs. Cool. So, now that we have the song structure, but what about the actual music? Well, the musical key is almost always a minor key. Sometimes Chuck would balance between minor and Phrygian scales. He does this quite a bit on his last three studio albums. Or by using the flattened fifth note and Locrian scales. 
which is mainly earlier on in death, as well as a decent about as well as a decent bit of chromaticism. Add in some tritone riffage if you really want to be evil. The Phrygian scale adds the Phrygian scale adds some much needed exotic and evil sound to the songs with that flattened second, as YouTuber Shred describes it, the most evil scale. <laughs> scale is evil AF because of that flat second degree or the B flat. Of course, lyrics vary greatly from early death to control denied, but in general, death's lyrics are a little bit more profound than simply gory and blasphemous lyrics that his contemporaries would write. In 2023, these types of lyrics are commonplace, but in the early and mid-90s, especially in death metal, for the most part, it was an abnormality, a novelty, something far different than Morbid Angel or suffocation would write about for example so there you have it to write like chuck you just need to copy the song structure write amazing catchy and heavy riffs have incredible introspective lyrics hire the best musicians you can find be a guitar god unbelievably brutal and shrieking vocals and then simply record it all and release it simple isn't it rest in peace chuck unfortunately some people are putting it in a particular lyrical mode i feel from being around a long time and and being in this for such a long time being you know playing this type of music i feel that i shouldn't put a limit on myself lyrically that's why you don't hear dad singing about uh, demons uh flying down and, and plucking uh nuns from the earth you know that's idiotic that 